All right, guys, thanks for coming. Uh, today we're here to obviously celebrate uh, Mike's 70th birthday. Um, so I want to thank everyone who came from afar. Uh, some people flew from California, so I'm really appreciative of that. So you, you're in for a full day of the past, present, and future of database systems. So we're going to have a lot of talks from people that work with Mike, people that have butted heads with Mike, um, and people that are frankly just friends with Mike. Um, so we are live streaming right now, uh, and there will be video archives available on the stonebreaker70.com website afterwards. Um, so I'm, I'm your host today, I'm your MC. Uh, I, you know, I really, really wanted to do this. I was really excited when Sam asked me to do it. Uh, well, technically he didn't ask me. He said, you know, we need an MC, and I volunteered because nobody else did. Uh, <laughs> But Sam had uh, some very, very tight restrictions for me to, if he wanted me to do this. Um, so in two things in particular is I'm not allowed to hire anybody on Craigslist to come and appear with me on stage today. Um, and I'm also allowed not to make up anything about Mike uh, while I'm on stage today. Right? So everything that I will say, I can't vouch for other people, Anything that I will say will be factually correct and vetted. Um, and just to show you how serious Sam was about these restrictions, he had a swearing-in <laughs> ceremony um, in his office where he made me sign everything. We had a notary. It was kind of embarrassing, but I did it because I really wanted to be here. Um, and just so you know, uh, since Sam and I are not religious, uh, the book that I'm swearing on here is actually Jim Gray's <laughs> tr transactions book. Okay, so uh, let's first deal with the elephant in the room, right? Uh, today is April 12th, okay? That is not Mike's birthday, okay? <laughs> His real birthday is October 11th, right? So we're about six months off, um, which is close enough, right? And you may be asking what took so long? And the answer is that uh, the organizing committee was comprised of six professors. Uh, <laughs> And as you know, when you ask professors to do something, there's usually, you know, there's a, a you know, slop time, some slack that has to be allotted, right? They say they're going to do something on Monday. It's probably going to be Thursday or Friday. So now, what you may not know is that little slop factor is actually multiplicative when you have multiple professors. <laughs> so that's why all six of us took six months to uh, arrange today. Okay. So let's talk about today's schedule, what we have going on. Um, Let's talk about what today's not going to be, right? Um, so first of all, this is not a funeral eulogy. Um, <laughs> Mike is not dying. This is not like he's, you know, he's going to disappear this summer. Uh, he's in perfect health. Uh, he, we arm wrestled last night, and he beat me. Um, so that, that, that don't feel like there's something, you know, that we're hiding from you when we talk about today. Um, today is also not a comedic roast. Uh, <laughs> From my point of view, uh, again, Sam wanted me to be very professional, uh, so that means you're not going to hear off-key jokes or blue jokes to say things like, bad. Like, there's nothing going to be like that, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to try to keep it classy. Uh, it's not hiccography, uh, so we're not just going to talk about how great Mike is, how his farts don't smell, and things like that. Uh, the speakers today have been, uh, have been given the charge that if there were specific times where Mike did something wrong or stupid, uh, they want to bring that up and, and, and make it this well-known in public. Um, so don't feel like we're going to have a, you know, a, a veneer over everything about Mike's past. Um, and this is also not passive theater, right? Uh, so that means it's not just us on stage talking about how great Mike is or, and Mike's contributions. Um, we want you as the audience to contribute. And there'll be an open mic period at the end where you'll have a chance to come up and you know, say whatever your grievance is with Mike or say some, your, your favorite memory about Mike. OK. So now for the morning session, uh, obviously you're going to have me doing the introduction and the historical non-database background of Mike Stonebreaker. Um, and then David DeWitt's going to come on, and he's going to talk about his 44 years experience with Mike. Because as far as we know, um, David is the person that has known Mike the longest that's here today. Um, he was actually the only person that was taught by Mike uh, when Mike was a TA at the University of Michigan. So he can give all the, the gory details about Mike back then. 
Um, and then after that, we'll take a break, and then we're going to have what we're calling the Berkeley era. So this would, this would correspond to uh, Mike's period when he was obviously at in California from 1971 to 2001. Uh, so we're going to start off with the Ingress panel discussing, you know, the days of the early days of Ingress um, in the 1970s, and then we're going to have a panel to discuss uh, Postgres and the other projects that were going on that came after uh, Mike returned to Berkeley to, uh, to do to do uh, after Ingress finished. And then after lunch, we're going to switch over to now discuss Mike's uh, contributions here on the East Coast when he moved to MIT. Uh, so Stan Zadonik is going to talk about streaming. Uh, Andy Palmer is going to discuss about the Vertica days and column stores. Sam's going to talk about, in general, his impact that Mike has had in the, not, I think not only at MIT, but just the New England database community uh, abroad. And then we'll have students that have worked with Mike, uh, Magda and myself, discuss you know, the gory details of what it's actually like to work with Mike. Um, and then we'll have a closing session. We have some video messages that were sent by people who, who could not be here today, but they sent some well wishes, and we have a video of that. And then we'll have the open mic session. And then we have a, a brief 10 minutes where Mike is allowed to talk. And it's the only time that he's allowed to say anything <laughs> through the entire day. Um, and then we'll have the quiz results, which I'll talk about in a second. And then there'll be a reception, I think, either outside or, or uh, where's the reception? Out here? There. Upstairs, fourth floor. And right, we'll guide you there. All right. So the Stonebreaker quiz. So each of you should have gotten a copy of this quiz. I can pass out more if you don't have one yet. Um, take one, pass it back. Andy, pay my attention because Mike doesn't actually know the answer to the Stonebreaker quiz. So, well, so uh, we'll get to this. Anybody whose last name ends with Stonebreaker is not allowed to finish, fin finish the, con uh, fill, fill the quiz out. All right, if you don't have one, take, take, take one, pass it back. You guys are ineligible. <laughs> 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 we had all the chairs changed. Yeah. yeah, we did that just for this. All right. So the Stonebreaker quiz. Uh, five questions. Um, multiple choice, uh, fill your name and uh, email address out so uh, we can win prizes. So first of all, there, uh, there is a correct answer for every single question, right? And it's been, again, we've gone through the, the brain trust of, of uh, Beth Stonebreaker and Michael Brody, so we, have, we know the answers for all of them. Uh, so don't feel like we're, you know, we're just pulling your leg. Um, so there'll be a box out there uh, at the registration decks where you can uh, drop your filled out um, your quiz, and then uh, try to do this before you return to lunch uh, when we start the afternoon session. And then we have prizes at the end that actually been donated by, graciously by Vertica and VoltDB. And they're not just like, you know, coffee bug, they're actually kind of nice. Uh, so you, so you, want, you want to try to win these, okay? And again, if, you, if you're, you guys in the front row, if your last name is Stonebreaker, you cannot, you cannot fill this out. Um, so we'd also like to actually thank uh, additional sponsors that have been helping us out uh, to pay for all this. Uh, obviously, Intel and Microsoft are very generous in donating. Um, and then Cola Labs, uh, which is a startup club here in Cambridge. And of course, we'd also like to thank Joe Tango and Andy Palmer for making personal donations uh, to make this all, you know, pay for the reception, pay for the t-shirts, pay for the, the quiz, uh, and things, things like that. All right. All right, so I'll do the best I can and stop me if I get anything wrong, Mike. Um, since today is going to be all about databases and streaming and yada, 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 uh, I'm going to spend some time actually discussing the non-database aspect of Mike Stonebreaker that you not, may not be familiar with and is not readily available on Wikipedia uh, just yet. All right? <laughs> So uh, Mike's, Mike's parents were Lewis and Leslie Stonebreaker. Uh, Lewis was originally an engineer. Uh, and then when they moved to New Hampshire, because this, this seems to be a growing theme in, uh, in Mike's family, uh, uh, Leslie insisted that they move from Boston to New Hampshire. So they lived there for a while, and he was a foreman. And then uh, around when Mike was 10, they moved back to uh, the Boston area in Newbury. Um, so Mike was born in uh, October 11th, 1943. Uh, he is the middle child. Uh, he went to Governor Dummer. Uh, they, they actually changed the name. I look at this. So Governor Dummer Academy is a, 
a nice private school, uh, high school, uh, they actually changed the name in 2007 to now the Governor Academy because everyone like you just laughed. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, so at Mike, uh, and when, while Mike was in high school, he did really, re, very well in math and science. Uh, he played a little golf, he played a little soccer, just because it was the thing to do. It was not like it was his passion. Uh, Mike commented that the pro one of the problems he had growing up was that he was very uncoordinated, given that he was so tall, um, and that so he just did sports just to do them, right? And then, uh, all right, so then Mike has two brothers, David Stonebreaker and Peter Stonebreaker. Mike is actually in the middle here. Um, and as you can see, his old, he's already taller than his older brother. Um, so that just gives you a sense of how fast Mike was, uh, was you know, getting, gaining height as he was growing up. Mike, uh, Mike had a, uh, through family uh, finances, uh, trust left by his grandparents, he had enough money to go to college. And so Mike really could have gone anywhere. Um, and he wanted to go to an engineering school because that's what his father was pushing him towards. But he also wanted to go to school that had sort of a liberal arts uh, curriculum. So he chose Princeton, but he really could have gone anywhere. And Mike commented that he chose Princeton because uh, it was far enough away from his parents where they wouldn't come visit. That was sort of the, the main thing that, that he cared about. Um, so Mike uh, majored in engineering at uh, Princeton. Uh, he spent a lot of times during the week studying, but for the weekends he was mostly going on, as he said, long road trips to meet women and find girls. Uh, because at the time Princeton was a you know a, a men's only school. So then Mike graduated in 1965, and that was sort of the height of the Vietnam War. So Mike really had a choice, right? He could either uh, he could go to grad school or he could go to the, uh, get drafted and go to Vietnam. So he chose to go to grad school. And so he had an NSF fellowship at the time, so he really could have gone anywhere. Uh, and he chose to go to the University of Michigan because uh, that's where they had the best financial aid package for him. Um, so Mike was at the University of Michigan from 1965 to 1971. And this was actually timed because at the, the, at the point when he graduated, he was no longer eligible for the draft. So he thought it was safe to go outside in, in the real world. So then, uh, after he graduated from the University of Michigan with a PhD uh, in, remind me again, CICE, which means something, not computer science, um, <laughs> Mike moved to Berkeley. And this is, I think, <laughs> one of the most pivotal points in Mike's career, right? Uh, as a new Ber uh, Berkeley professor, he realized that, you know, to meet women at the time, he needed to grow a mustache. And let me tell you, he grew an amazing mustache. Um, <laughs> he started off with the Fu Manchu. It was a little wispy, but that was okay. Um, and then he just sort of groomed a little bit more, and then he ended up with the end with a, a, a light Burt Reynolds, which I think is beautiful. <laughs> um, but then he realized that uh, you know, the times were changing, mustaches weren't really in, in style anymore, so he had to shave his mustache. Because uh, again, he was out on the prowl looking for love in all the wrong places. Um, and then, lo and behold, uh, he ended up meeting Beth Stonebreaker in 1981, and they got married in 1984. Uh, I was thought this middle picture was actually a prom picture, but I've been, been told that it's actually your brother's wedding, right? So it's not prom. Um, and then uh, they were married in 1984, and then they had uh, Leslie and Sandy, who were sitting in the front row. Leslie was born in 1987, and Sandy was born in 1991. Um. <laughs> so other aspects of uh, Mike's life that are important to know is that Mike and Beth did a cross-country bike ride in 1988. And Mike says that, has said that if you want to know whether you're actually compatible with your wife, ride with her on a tandem bike across the entire country. And that's, you'll sort out all the issues, marital problems that you have on that bike ride. Um, Mike is also known as, uh, in 2001, Mike and Beth moved to, uh, back to the East Coast from Berkeley at much conjoling from Beth, which again seems to be a recurring theme in Mike's history where the women in his life want to move back to the Boston area. Um, among other things that Mike does, uh, Mike is also known as being a mountain man. So he has climbed many mountains in New Hampshire. Yes, there is a number, and it's on the quiz. Um, and he's, he's a, he climbs a lot of mountains with Mike Brody, his friend here, to say, I don't know what this last picture is on the, on the, uh, on the right. Uh, it has nothing to do with mountains. I just thought it was hilarious. Uh, <laughs> OK. Um, so that's all I have. So uh, the next we're going to have uh, we're going to have uh, David DeWitt's going to talk about the, the, the history of Mike. Yes. OK.
Is that right now, Thomas? Yeah, right. All right. Uh, so there's been a, like a scheduling conflict. Um, so the MIT people just sent a note. Uh, if you're here for the Larry Ellison Erotic Fan Fiction Club, <laughs> um, there's, we, we've been double booked, and they're now at boarding 41, uh, the physical plant down the street. So again, if you're here for that, I'm sorry there's a minute mix up. Just go there. All right.